Real superheroes don't wear spandex tights. I think um, what Desmond shows is what I find the most inspiring. And I understand that it's the other realm warring. Uh, I, I believe that that's a very real thing. And I've taken steps wherever I can to sort of like... Um... I get up every day and I realize I'm not in control of this whole thing. And no matter what happens, I just asked for the grace to be able to deal with it. So they took Polaroids of me, slapped them on the board, and they said, come back in three weeks when you heal up. So I came back in three weeks, and they said, yes. And I said, I'm here. And they said, well, who are you? And we're all young youngsters, really. I think the average age was like 19. Uh, and they were divided into companies of 50, and they all had a CO. Mel Gibson is known for his bold and uncompromising stance within Hollywood. And his prediction from 1998 about its dark side appears to be finally happening. First time I really came over here. You know, I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on. Um, and nobody was really bothering to explain it to me. They don't. <laughs> and I formed a bunch of opinions about the town. Mel went on to talk about what the people did behind the scenes that absolutely shocked him. And about the people in it that were like, surely that couldn't be. The whole place can't be like, they tell you don't go out of the house on the hill. And, it's like that. Mm -hmm. And then you go away and you think, no, that's, I was wrong. I mean, that's insane thinking. I'm paranoid. Mel would also go on to mention how most people in the industry stay silent out of fear of public humiliation, but he doesn't care anymore. And you find out later on the track that you are exactly on track mm -hmm. with a lot of this stuff, that some of your worst nightmares were real at the time. And you think, <gasps> number one fear is public humiliation. Okay, I don't give a f anymore. He caught the media's attention when he openly expressed his deep-rooted aversion to an industry that simultaneously celebrated and criticized him. At 67 years old, Gibson held the belief that the entire Hollywood machinery operated like a mysterious inner sanctum, cloaked in secrecy and intrigue. Unsurprisingly, his unwavering stance has won him a lot of support from the public. One person pointed out a recent case in how Russell Brand is now getting the Trump treatment for truth-telling, as is Mel Gibson and anyone else who's been bold enough to step out of line by disputing or refusing to follow the Democrats' power-grabbing narratives. Whilst this person made it clear that Mel was a hero, a brilliant clip from an old movie that resonates with so many around the world right now, Mel is our hero in many other ways also, helping the kids women. And this person highlighted how people who often spoke up against the status quo just so happened to get vilified for it. MJ warned people about the occult. Siniet O'Connor warned people about the Pope. Mel Gibson warned people about Hollywood's disgusting dark side. There are more examples, I'm sure, but those are the three that immediately came to mind. Recently, Mel Gibson's frank critique of Hollywood has resurfaced, reigniting discussions about his unwavering viewpoint. A name synonymous with both cinematic brilliance and controversy, Gibson once again made headlines by publicly supporting The Sound of Freedom. This film, focusing on the distressing reality of child ex and inspired by the life of former DHS agent Tim Ballard, faced intense scrutiny from the media, labeling its advocates as paranoid conspiracy theorists. However, it's important to note that long before the rise of Quanon and its conspiracy theories, Gibson had always expressed concerns about Hollywood. The clips we displayed earlier, for example, are from a 1998 interview that has re-emerged, showcasing the actor's early suspicions about Tinseltown's enigmatic workings. Gibson candidly admitted, First time I came over here, you know, I had a bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand and nobody was really bothering to explain it to me. Additionally, the Braveheart star added, you know, weird town, you know, where the stranger wanders in and all the people are in the bar and they all shut up when he looks at them and they tell you don't go to the house on the hill. It's like that. Gibson's words, spoken a quarter century ago, serve as a stark and enduring reminder that even within the glittering world of showbiz, there are voices willing to unveil the concealed realities behind the Hollywood facade. The resurgence of this video interview, coinciding with the release of The Sound of Freedom, underscores the lasting relevance of Gibson's concerns about the entertainment industry. Considering how Hollywood both elevated and criticized him, it appears Gibson is really the right person to bank on for insights into its darker aspects. In 1996, following his impressive roles in Braveheart as writer, director, producer, and actor, Gibson secured two Academy Awards, a pinnacle in his career before a series of scandals unfolded. 
In the post-Braveheart years, Gibson took on roles as villains, action heroes, buffoons, and seducers, finding financial success, though not critical acclaim. From the late 1990s to the mid 2000s ES, Gibson grappled with alcohol-fueled outbursts that tarnished his image. He admitted to a Sana Grigorieva, the mother of his eighth child, and was caught making offensive remarks on tape. In 2006, a drink driving arrest saw him make anti Semitic comments, captured by a police surveillance camera. Despite facing a significant hit to his reputation, Gibson was determined to reclaim the spotlight. He accepted roles that came his way, even as prominent figures in Hollywood hesitated to collaborate due to his controversial past. The same thing that happened to Mel Gibson happened to actors like. John Travolta or Bruce Willis, says Eric Schwartzel, an entertainment journalist with The Wall Street Journal. After huge success, they end up halfway between conventional and low-budget productions that take advantage of their fading notoriety. Gibson's contentious history added further complexity to his comeback journey. Nevertheless, it seemed Gibson was not destined for lesser projects forever. Many observers in Hollywood predicted his return to high-budget productions, possibly with aspirations for another shot at an Oscar. In Vulture, journalist Kevin Lincoln noted, for the right people, the Academy can be an incredibly forgiving bunch. Despite spending decades in exile to escape a fiction, Roman Polanski won Best Director at the 2003 Oscars to huge applause at the ceremony. Gibson had a helping hand from some powerful friends in his journey to rehabilitation. Vanity Fair's in-depth 2011 profile by film historian Peter Biskind shed light on the Hollywood personalities close to Gibson, such as Jodie Foster, Whoopi Goldberg, Robert Downey Jr., and his lethal weapon partner Danny Glover. They played a key role in securing him work a few years after his DUI arrest. Foster, a strong supporter, cast Gibson in the leading role of her psychological drama, The Beaver, 2011, expressing her fondness for him and dismissing claims of racism or Sikhism. Downey Jr. publicly sought forgiveness for Gibson at a Los Angeles awards ceremony in 2011, acknowledging the imperfections within the industry. He also highlighted Gibson's support during his battle with addiction. During his rehabilitation, the Braveheart star embraced sobriety and was ordered to attend anger management therapy in 2012 as part of his ex-partner's the efforts appeared to pay off. In a relatively short span of 11 years after his arrest, Gibson was nominated for Best Director for Hacksaw Ridge at the 2017 Academy Awards, marking a return to the pinnacle of recognition. In an article co-authored by Eric Schwartzel and Ben Fritz, they delved into the question of why Hollywood chose to forgive Gibson. Money appeared to play a significant role as evidenced by Ari Emanuel, who, after dropping Gibson following his anti-Semitic remarks, reconciled with him only after Gibson provided a role to another star he represented, Mark Wahlberg, in the 2022 comedy Father Stew. Surprisingly, the Hash Me Too movement played a role in reshaping Mel Gibson's public image. During a 2017 press conference for the movie Daddy's Home, where he starred alongside Will Ferrell and Wahlberg, Gibson was asked about Harvey Weinstein. His response resonated with many, given the shocking revelations about the serial who had held significant sway over Hollywood for decades. Gibson empathized with the victims and praised their courage in speaking out, shedding light on the dark corners of the industry. He mentioned how painful it was to learn about the abuse and offered to testify against Weinstein in ongoing trials, a commitment he reaffirmed in 2022. However, despite Gibson's reintegration into Hollywood, some troubling aspects of his character have persisted over the years. In a 1991 interview with LPEs, he made derogatory comments about gay individuals. Additionally, during the same period, when Winona Ryder disclosed her Jewish identity to Gibson, he callously made a joke about <laughs> Nearly three decades later, Gibson released a documentary about his father, Hutton Gibson, an ultra-Catholic <laughs> denier who passed away in 2020. Gibson's most recent significant controversy unfolded in 2021 when he saluted former President Donald Trump at a boxing match, drawing cheers from far-right media. Addressing Gibson's involvement in the upcoming Lethal Weapon movie, actor Joshua Molina, known for his role in The West Wing, remarked during a panel that perhaps it's time to reconsider op-eds about the perceived power of cancel culture. He pointed out that if Gibson continues to secure financial backing and approval in Hollywood, cancel culture may not hold the sway some suggest. It turns out, Mel Gibson might have had a point about Hollywood's darker side. 
considering what often unfolds behind the scenes. In 2022, Amanda Seyfried shared some eye-opening insights about the entertainment industry during an interview with Porter Magazine. The talented actress, known for her role in The Dropout, opened up about the challenging memories from the early days of her acting career. Seyfried bravely disclosed that she had been placed in uncomfortable situations on movie sets, including being pressured into performing scenes when she was just a teenager. She explained that the fear of losing her job led her to agree to these distressing scenes. Seyfried made her debut in Mean Girls in 2004 at the age of 19 and also appeared in Veronica Mars the same year. Reflecting on those times, she exclaimed, being 19, walking around without my on like, are you kidding me? How did I let that happen? And then she answered her own question saying, oh, I know why. I was 19 and I didn't want to upset anybody and I wanted to keep my job. That's why. Seyfried even recalled an uncomfortable experience of watching HBO's 2008 series Big Love with her parents, only to be shocked by seeing herself in graphic and intimate scenes on screen. I was sitting there watching and all of a sudden it cut to a scene where two people are having and it's me having sex thought, no, 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 she shared, clearly troubled by the memory. It was so much more graphic than I remembered. I was horrified. That's all for the video, folks. Thanks for watching.